Hello everyone, welcome to the second InDesign tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the workflow around InDesign and also about data security. But don't worry, we're also going to create our first InDesign document today. So let's get started. One important thing if you work with InDesign is that you keep everything in one folder because in your InDesign document there are no pictures saved. The pictures are in the folder folders you have here. So they are linked to the document. So if I would move these pictures it would break the links and the pictures in the document would be gone. So just keep everything in a folder and the pictures you use in the document, just don't move them. One other thing is, if you have data from the lab, you want to make sure that you have a folder that is called original data. In this, you just restore every data you got, throw it in this folder, and if you want to work with it, just copy it. Because then you can mess the data up and play around, and you have always a backup nearby. If you're working with macOS, the operating system, there are some really nice tweaks you can do that makes your workflow much, much quicker and more efficient. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit. One example is putting your dock on the side because we don't want to have it down here. So we have a wide screen, we have a lot of space at the side, so put just your dock here, over there. One other thing is activate at active corners. So what this will do, if you have some programs open, you go in one corner, you can define. It will spread out your windows and you can just switch really quick between the programs. Now we go back to the corner. And also you can go in another corner and access your desktop really quick and just move files around and stuff like this. Also you can activate the screen saver. So if you want to leave your computer for a few minutes, it's always nice to have it protected. One important thing is data security. So if you have everything in one folder, you can just transfer it to a hard drive or USB key and make sure, just make sure that if something crashes, you have a backup of your data. So I would recommend to at least once per week just shovel your whole folder on an external drive or USB key. Because the other thing we have, if you have an external drive, you can activate Time Machine. So this will make a backup every hour of your whole system. So you don't really need to worry about making a backup every few minutes. It's done automatically for you. However, I would still recommend to, as I said, once a week, put everything on a USB key in case something goes wrong with your hard drive and your computer. It's always good to have a have a backup, a second <laughs> backup. Alright, now it's time to start our InDesign document. So just open up InDesign, go on New, and create your document. There are some things we want to change here. Facing pages. This means that you have a magazine, you have two pages. As a bachelor or master thesis, we just want to have one page. So we're just going to print one side of each page. So we're going to deactivate facing pages. Then, if your supervisor gave you some information about the text and how far it should be away from the border of your document, of the border of your print, of the border of the paper, for example, just say two centimeters on each side, we can just set it in margins. If we deactivate the chains here, we also can say that we want inside the inside of the document, we want a little bit more distance, like 25 millimeters. Now go on OK, and there we go. Here's our document. InDesign can be, in the start, really, really confusing with all the settings. But don't worry, you can customize everything you see here. For example, I customized the whole toolbar here with the tools I need and I want to work with. So we're going to get started really easy and simple, so you don't going to be so confused. One thing you want to recognize is that you can just save your workspace. So you go on New Workspace, give it a name, and click on OK, and this will save your workspace, your personal workspace, how you want to have it here. This is really nice to, to do. All right, so let's get started. To, to get some text in here, you're going to select the Type tool and just drag the text box. Now we can type in here. We can zoom a little bit and just say, hello. World. One thing that is in the 
default settings of InDesign is if you want to drag the text, then you can't do it. So if you want to drag and drop, like here, you need to set this in the settings. So going on InDesign, preferences, on type, and you make some checks in drag and drop text editing. Where you are here, you also should activate Smart Text Reflow, and I'm going to tell you now what is this about. So just imagine we typing a lot of in a lot of text in here. So I don't want to type so much right now, so I just fill it with placeholder text. As we can see now, we have the whole page filled, and we want to create a second page. Because we want to go the text from this page to the next page. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the box, click on this square over here, and now we can just go over here and create a new text frame. So if we would type a little bit more, we would add the text also here. It would just flow into the next page. But don't worry, we don't need to do this for every page. So now where we have two pages, the, the feature we activated in the options just works if you have two text frames. What is happening now if we type a lot of things more, that it will add pages automatically. So we're just going to see this right now. It's not working. Oh, there we go. Alright, so it just creates automatically new pages for us. This is really useful if we want to work with this. Is. So if we delete some of the text, it also will remove the pages again. Alright, this was everything for this episode. So remember, use active corners, even if it's a little bit tricky in the start, but you will get used to it and then it's really nice. Then make sure you make a lot of backups and also make sure you organize your data. In the next tutorial we're going to talk about how to do a lot of crazy things with text. So see you next time. Bye.